When we subsidize renewable energy, why do emissions of greenhouse gas emissions go down and then up and then down relative to the baseline? Let's go check this out. Here we have renewable energy, and I'm going to boost up to the top level the big subsidy. We're going to put a lot of money into wind and solar around the world. And then look over in the top right here. There's emissions relative to the baseline fall, but then they rise up through the 2060s, 2070s, and then fall again relative to the baseline. What's going on? Well, first, what's really driving these emissions? What does renewables affect? Well, it's mostly about coal and gas, right? So go to emissions and go see where the source is. Emissions from coal. Yep, there it is. It goes down, but then there's this resurgence of coal in the 2050s, the 2040s, 2050s. And then the same, I believe. Let's go see with natural gas. Okay, same thing. Well, what's driving this decrease to 2040? And then what might be happening here? It's got to be about uh, overall renewable energy. So go look at renewables. And what we see when we have this change, go back and redo it, we see this big growth of renewables crowding out coal, crowding out gas. But then the rate of growth of renewables kind of slows. You see it's going up and then a little more slowly. Now, why does it start growing more slowly? When you see that, usually it's because of the cost. Something must be going on to make renewables more expensive. Let's go look and see. Marginal cost of electricity production. Without a subsidy, green is wind and solar. It gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, kind of balances out, gets a little more expensive. With a subsidy, it drops to get really inexpensive. But look, why from 2036 through 2050 does it get more expensive? What's going on in the model is that we are now modeling the cost of storage. It's easiest to use wind and solar when the wind is blowing and the sun is shining. When it's not, we're going to need three types of storage, all three types which we and our modeling team added to En-ROADS. Short term, hour by hour, midterm, or on the day level, and then long term, which is the most expensive level of store or type of storage which is more month to month and over seasons. Let's go look and see how much uh, energy we've got. Uh, let's see um, how much of this storage we're getting. And look, there it is, energy storage capacity. More storage is growing over time. You can see it going up. It's going up particular because our fraction of electricity coming from renewables is getting fairly high. And here you can see what it was. It was without any baseline, without any change, it was here. You can see that we're getting a large share of our electricity from renewables. That's the point when more of this expensive long-term storage is needed. So renewables gets more expensive. So coal and gas grow at, in that 2040 to 2050 period uh, because it's getting, uh, they're just more attractive. Then in the longer term, what's happening is that the cost of uh, long-term storage and overall storage is coming down again because of the learning curve, because of economies of scale. We've done enough of it that it gets cheaper and cheaper. And so suddenly you get faster growth and that's what leads to this uh, period of emissions falling yet again. So that's the explanation about this period of dropping fossil fuel emissions, a resurgence, and then less. So of course it prompts the question of what can we do about it? Well, let's go look at the storage that we have and the technologies for doing it. Click on the three dots under renewables and under here we have other storage breakthrough cost reduction. If it gets cheaper, then we get more of it and notice what you'll see in the top right is that emissions come down because we're getting less of a resurgence of coal and gas. We also have hydrogen storage for long-term energy electricity storage. What if we have a cost reduction in that? You'll see a green area growing in the top left, more hydrogen storage. This could uh, bring 
the emissions down because it would be less of a resurgence of coal and gas. Now, mind you, those uh, that hydrogen source is its own source of global warming because it can leak. And we're capturing that and we're capturing many other important assumptions in here in this area about electricity storage and demand response. Stored hydrogen leakage rate, there's that leakage rate. Uh, other things like demand response progress, like helping uh, users of energy use it at a time where it's easiest for wind and solar, et cetera. The progress ratios and some other efficiencies are here. So overall, that's the reason behind that cycling, the need for storage and the boost of costs. And these are some things that may come out of technology and policy to address it. Hope that was helpful. Go get them.